gave you fair warning, beware. I gave you fair warning, beware. cosmology of the Phoenicians and in the cosmology of the Babylonians, the raging sea is called in Babylonian Tiamat. Tiamat is a uh, reduplicated form of the word yam. Yam means ocean or sea or lake. The ocean, the raging sea is called a monster in Babylonian mythology. So it's the raging sea and obviously it's a monster and her name is Tiamat. In Phoenician mythology, the ocean, great sea, is called the serpent, the dragon. There are many names, but essentially it means the great serpent, which is the ocean, or the great dragon that exerts its power. In, in Phoenician mythology, we read these terms, and they speak of Leviathan, Leviathan and Tanin. These are the names of the primeval dragons who are represented or personified because they are the raging sea. Here we have another one, Dagon. Now, Dagon, it's interesting, was the old Phoenician Canaanite uh, deity, Dagon, the fish god. And you will see he's... Uh, He's wearing a fish's headdress, and you'll see the fish, uh, the body of the fish. Here it is better. Dagon, the fish god. So the ancient priest and the old Phoenician Canaanite Babylonian system, coming out of the old ancient Babylonian system, uh, were worshippers of the Phoenician Canaanite god Dagon, D-A-G-O-N, and they wore the fish's uh, symbol on them, symbolizing that they were in subjection to the great Dagon, which is uh, where we get our word even today, Dragon or Dagon. Romans made sacrifices to the gods on seeing them arrive. Horrible beings with arms covered in scales, with snakes wrapped around their arms, emerged from the sea, screeching and screaming. In the city of Nice, it rained blood. Carriages of fire were seen in the sky, being pulled by the frightening creatures. Some at the body of a man, some at bodies of women and they had heads shaped like dragons.
Genoa, was the hometown of Christopher Columbus. On October the 11th, 1492, whilst halfway across the Atlantic on his voyage to discover America, Columbus saw a UFO and recorded the event in his ship's log. At the same time Columbus recorded a UFO hovering above the Atlantic Sea, the Aztec civilization of Central America carved figurines of men with reptilian bodies. Welcome to our investigation on the wonderful Dogon tribe of Africa. The Dogons live near the Hombori Mountains near Timbuktu in the southwestern portion of the Sahara Desert. Central to their religious teachings is knowledge about the Sirius star system, which includes a star which is invisible to the naked eye, in fact so difficult to observe, even through a telescope, that no known photographs were taken of it until 1970. had already named Sirius B, Po Tolo, a name which includes the word for star, Tolo, and Po, the name of the smallest seed known to them. They had in fact described the star's size by noting that it was the smallest thing there is. They also had recognised that it was both white and the heaviest star. The Dogon were also able to describe its elliptical orbit with Sirius A at one foci of the ellipse its orbital period of 50 years, and the fact the star rotated on its axis. Significantly, the Dogon also described a third star in the Sirius system, which they called Emiya, Sorghum Femal, and which contained a single satellite in orbit around M. The Dogon idea of there being a Sirius C, Aka Emiya, was not accorded any real respect until 1995, when two French astronomers published their results after years of study of what was apparently a small red dwarf star with the Sirius star system. The conclusion was based on perturbations in the orbits that could not be explained by any other means. Obviously the Dogon were way ahead of modern astronomers. In addition to the Sirius star system, the Dogon mythology includes knowledge of Saturn's rings and Jupiter's four major moons, none of which can be seen by the naked eye, and it was only by Galileo and later astronomers' telescopes that either could be seen. The Dogon also have long known that planets orbit the Sun. According to the Dogon, their astronomical knowledge was supposedly given to them by the Nomos, amphibious beings sent to Earth from Sirius for the benefit of mankind. The name comes from a Dogon word meaning to make one drink, with the Nomos also being called masters of the water, the monitors and the teachers. The Nomos considered to be saviours and spiritual guardians were allegedly more fish-like than human and had to live in water. So how did the Dogon know about Sirius B when they had no telescopes? How, for that matter, did they know that Saturn had rings and that the moon is dry and barren and that Jupiter has four large moons? These four moons of Jupiter are called Galileon because Galileo was the first to see them when he pointed his telescope at Jupiter. The moons of Jupiter and Saturn's rings are only visible through a telescope. The Dogon mythology can be traced back to the Nomo, the human fish creatures from their creation myths. Their creatures are comparable to the Oones of Sumerian mythology, who are also a half-fish, half-human creature who brought civilization to the ancient people. Further still, there are links with Egyptian and Greek mythology, including that of the Mayan people. They visited the Dogon, the Babylonians, and possibly the Egyptians and the Mayans, and the astronomical knowledge of the Dogon came from this contact. The Dogon stories tell the legend of the Nomos, who arrived in a vessel along with fire and thunder. After they arrived here, they put out a reservoir of water onto the earth, then dove into the water. There are references in the oral traditions drawings and tablets of the Dogons to human looking beings who have feet but who are portrayed as having large fish skin running down their bodies. The Nomos were more fish-like than human and had to live in water. They were survivors and spiritual guardians. 
the nomo divided his body amongst men to feed them. That is why it is also said that as the universe had drunk of his body, the nomo also made men drink.